Hello viewers, hello dear HND candidates, welcome to the GCE panel online TV. In this particular uh, presentation, we are looking at the solution of general computing for June or May 2023 HND for all the specialties. All the specialties for HND, general computing or computer studies, complete paper, for 2023 please make sure you watch this till the end so we would like to thank all the teachers and students who have been working very hard for the upcoming years and for the past years and we hope that you find this material useful in helping you prepare for your exams we are equally calling on candidates who have past papers to send to us so that our team can work on these papers, give you co uh, corrections or solutions, and guide you as you prepare for your exams. Please use the link below this video so that you can send us your past papers or you can leave a comment on and ask us how uh, you can uh, send. So please don't forget to subscribe as you watch this video till the end. This paper is made up of three main parts. Uh, which we have a uh, section A, which is 20 multiple choice questions, uh, section B, which comprises of 11 or 12 structural questions, uh, that is carrying 30 points, section A carries just 20 points, section B uh, 30 points, and section C carries most of the points or half of the points, 50 points. In section C, we are looking at the key applications, and in section D, there is no section D, but here we give you some tips. A total number of points is 100 and the total time is two hours so for your time allocation you will probably proceed as follows okay so for section a 15 to 20 minutes should do okay then for section b 20 to 30 minutes section c you can now use 50 to 70 minutes so that you can use the rest of the time now to check your work okay there are three sections is two hours and the total points is a hundred points please if you are watching this video it's because some people have taken time sat down and prepared it for you for you to encourage the team it will be good if you can click on the subscribe button followed by the notifications bell so that whenever you upload a new video which are uploading almost every week you'll be the first to be notified to help in your exams once you get the video please don't forget to, uh, to subscribe to share to leave your comments and so on now let's move to the first part of the question now using microsoft word we can simply you have paste pictures type format text okay so let's look at microsoft word this is the icon you see for microsoft word when you're working on your computers and with microsoft word you can use it for all of the above you can use to paste pictures type and format text uh, text so the key here is d question two the printed output from a computer is called so what you print out of your computer uh, that is probably using um, uh, your printer okay is called a hard copy like the books you have in school they're all hard copy books like your, your formula booklet you're using for hnd okay that's hard copy uh, material so the key for question two is c question three which of the following is a billion of a second a billion of a second means one over one billion and let us look at uh, how we look at uh, for seconds so a billion of seconds millisecond means one over one thousand microsecond one over one million nanosecond is one over one uh, uh, billion okay so nano is one over one billion okay so here the key is the nanosecond okay now equally the two kinds of main memory are so for the two kinds of main memory here they talk about cds and dvds what is cd cd is compact disc why DVD is a uh, digital video disc or digital versatile disc. And there are two types of memory. So CD and DVDs are not main, uh, main memory. There are two kinds of main memory. You have RAM and ROM. Okay. So another name for main memory is primary memory. And we have just RAM and ROM. Okay. 
So RAM and ROM. And what is RAM? Uh, random memory. Why ROM is read only memory? Okay. So this C part just to confuse you because main memory means primary memory. So that's why the key here is actually B. Okay. So our key here is. Um, So this is also known as uh, the read-write memory. So the key for question four is B. You have RAM and ROM. Question five, RAM is also called, so RAM is also known as volatile memory okay ram is also known as volatile memory okay now know that cache memory is much faster than ram okay and cache is also volatile yet they have distinctive purposes uh, cache memory facilitates or assists as the ram is uh, running okay then for the next part of the equation okay the, the key here first of all so the key for question five is known uh, the key for question five is volatile memory because ram is volatile memory okay while rom is known volatile let's take notes now question six question six reads the keyboard and computer screen together used to work with a computer that is located somewhere else so this computer located somewhere uh, somewhere else is known as so let's look at it the computer located somewhere else is known as the host uh this if you look at this computer here that is touch screen with the screens that you can use are known as touch screen so the, this answer is not touch screen and then now uh, we can talk equal about um, a terminal what's a terminal a terminal is an electronic or electromechanical hardware device that can be used for entering data into the computer system okay an example was the teletype it was an example of um, a terminal and then we know about peripherals right so those other components connected to the computer all right that brings us to the next question which is question seven the very small shape that is used in combination to form numbers letters and graphics <coughs> So this small shape used to form um, numbers, letters, and graphics is known as, so how do we call this? Bit. Bit. And what's a bit? Okay. So if you look at in terms of pixels, let's only look at the other ones as we come to this, uh, what's a bit? So pixels are the smallest units in digital display like for pictures so up to millions of pixels to make an image or uh, a video device screen so a pixel for sure just means picture element the smallest unit in the digital display okay now each pixel comprised of soft pixels and so on mm? now we know about bits to write it's a unit small unit, smallest unit of the computer we can take just two uh, values zero or one so that's it and then now for the resolution, resolution of computer is talking about or refers to the number of pixels that are displayed per inch for an image. The number of pixels, if you look at this picture here, there are small, small pixels inside. Okay, so if you consider one inch of this picture, you can get the number of pixels that are displayed there. Mm? And for this resolu resolution, talk about 72 uh, pixels per inch, 96 pixels per inch, and so on and so forth. Question 8. Question 8 is repeating. This is still the same as question 2, right? The printed paper output from a computer is known as hard copy. Okay, that's a hard copy. As you're watching the video, guys, please don't forget to subscribe. When you subscribe, we will know that the content we are producing is interesting to you. And when it's interesting, we will make more content. But if it's not interesting, then it means you are not interested and there is no need for us to produce more. So please subscribe. Leave your comments. 
share our videos on WhatsApp, Facebook, and other study groups where you have HND students. It can go a long way to help not just students but instructors as well. Okay, because sometimes you want to share information with the students, but you might not be able to access them. You students are the ambassadors now of this channel. Please leave your comments, share these video links to different uh, people, students, and so on, and communities. Question nine. A collection of data about a single topic is known as... So a collection of data about a single topic is a file. A file. A folder is a storage space or container where many files can be placed into groups or organized the, on the computer. A folder can contain many other folders, but a file is just a collection of data about a single topic, okay? Collection of data about a single topic. So uh, the key here is a file, okay? So if you look at uh, like this um, extract from the desktop on screen here, you will see that we have this folder, this is a folder, this is a folder, this is a folder, these are folders, and these are files, okay? We have an Excel file here, PowerPoint file, and we have PDF file, these are files. Question 10, which of the following devices has the highest storage capacity? Which of the following devices has the highest storage capacity? So, uh, if you look at this, a zip disk, floppy disk, CD write, CD read write, hard disk. So, which of these ones? Uh, well, you can easily know that the answer is um, the last one, a hard disk, right? A hard disk drive, okay? Now, what is a zip disk? A zip disk is about the same size like a floppy, but it's much thicker. So a zip disk is just like a floppy disk, but it's much thicker, okay? Then you can know about CD and uh, CD write and CD read write disk, right? So these are like just like your CDs, eh? So these ones cannot contain or carry enough information or has a high storage capacity as a hard disk. So that's why the key here is D. Question 11. A program that will enter the computer and destroy files stored in the computer is called... So only a worm. A worm can replicate itself on one computer, from one computer to another. But for a virus, a virus cannot. So the key here says that the thing enters a computer mm, and destroys files stored on the computer. Okay? So this is what you know we call a virus. A virus is what will enter and destroy, but on the other hand, a worm will enter the computer, replicate itself, and cause havoc. But the virus cannot replicate itself. So here, our key is a virus. But if they use the word that replicates, that's the key, we would have known that the answer is virus, though there is no virus here. There is nothing like destroyer, distractor, and file damage. Because some people just look at these terms and they will choose them. Question 12. A device that converts analog signal to digital signal is called... So these are transducers, right? All right. So what will convert... Um, that will convert an analog signal to a digital signal is actually a modem, okay? It will convert analog signal to a digital signal, okay? So take note, take note. You cannot take a speaker here because what's coming out is not, you cannot really call it a digital signal. Question 13. The TCP slash IP is a type of, so, uh, so we have talked about uh, TCPs and IPs. What's TCP? What's the full meaning of TCP? Transmission Control Protocol. Okay. And what is IP? Internet Protocol. So the type, uh, the TCP slash IP is a type of, it's a type of protocol, as you can see already. So it's a protocol, okay? Now, a type of computer network. Here we have LAN, we have TCP, we have IP, we have all of the above. So if you look at TCP and IP, they are not uh, computer networks, they are just protocols, 
what we have here is LAN. And what's the meaning of full meaning of LAN? Local area network. We call you have the wide area network and other networks which you already know about. Mm? Good. So question 15. A type of software which is designed for users to customize uh, program is so the types of softwares that here they have given us open uh, source software, freeware, shareware, macros. Now some of us will be asking about what are all of these things here. Let's first of all start with freeware. Freeware is software that anyone can download from the internet and use for free. We call it the freeware, you can download for free, use for free. What about a shareware? A shareware will give users the chance to try the software before buying it. So you can maybe use it for one month first and then it will stop working. So you can now buy it. So you can first of all try it before buying it. So we call that one what? We call that one a shareware. Okay. And then now what are macros? Macros are just sequence of events such as uh, keystrokes, mouse clicks, and so on that can be played back with the help of repetitive tasks. Okay. Those are just macros. If you work with the Excel, know about modules and macros, just repetitive tasks which you can use. So our key here is um, uh, open source, okay, open source uh, software. Then uh, the next, the port or interface used to connect the monitor is, so which uh, uh, port or monitor, uh, sorry, which port or interface we use to connect the monitor to the computer. So a video port is what is used to connect your computer or device uh, to the monitor or display so it's actually a video port okay and in this case talk about um, the video graphics array VGA so we can use a VGA cable to transfer video signal so we're going to use a video port because uh, we are not connecting it to the projector we're connecting it to, a, to the monitor okay to a screen And take note that you can equally use um, HDMI. Some computers can use uh, VGA to connect to the, uh, to the projector. Some will use HDMI, okay? What's HDMI? High definition multimedia interface. High definition multimedia interface, okay? So this is an example, this is a VGA uh, port where uh, for video. Question 17. The default orientation use of Microsoft Word page is, so for Microsoft Word, the page can either be portrait or landscape. Landscape is when it's horizontal like this, and portrait is when it's vertical or standing or oblong. <coughs> so for the default in Microsoft Word, your page is always portrait, okay? It's always portrait. Question 18, the computer jargon WWW stands for so uh, if you look at the terrible answers that I've given us here, worldwide wildlife, rubbish, worldwide world, ha, huh? worldwide web and worldwide work. And students will come and take some of this rubbish here. So WWW stands for worldwide web, worldwide web, uh, wide web. Question 19. According to the capacity and power of a computer, an example is. So in terms of our capacity and power of computer, so an example is a mini computer. We have supercomputers. We talk about power, right? Power. How strong the computer is. We have mini computers, supercomputers, and so on. Mm? So we have all these different computers. So in terms of this definition, the key here is mini uh, computer. Now, which kind of storage device can be easily carried around? So which of these can you easily uh, carry around? We already know the answer here. The flash disk, the USB key now, can easily carry this one around. It might be difficult a bit to carry this one. So just like we um, uh, projected earlier on, or we said earlier on, you just need 19 minutes to answer this uh, section. And we have used just uh, 19 minutes or 20 minutes. So you can take even 10, 10 to 20 minutes to answer this section. This brings us to section B. In section B, we have structural, and we're going to talk about, I think, a, a 12 questions. These 12 questions should be answered in uh, 25 to 30 minutes. Don't spend your time writing a lot of jazz or trash. Go straight to the point. Be explicit. 
Don't go and fill your paper with rubbish. Please, if you are watching this video and up to this moment, you have not yet subscribed, then you are not doing uh, the team that is working on these videos any good. Please, please, and please, below your video or on the video itself, click on the subscribe button and subscribe. It is free. You are not paying for anything. Subscribe and click on the notifications. So when you upload the next correction, 2023, 2022, and other uh, proposed papers or model papers, you'll be able to use this for your revision. Please take notes. Make sure you subscribe and click on the notifications. Now let's take section B. Normally the paper is not like this, but we have structured this in this form with equations and answers like this so that you can easily answer the questions and you see what is to be done on a section. So what is the difference between bit, a bit and a byte? General computing level one. Okay. So a bit is the smallest unit of data measurement and can only take two values, zero and one. While a byte is a combination of eight bits while a byte is a combination of eight bits, two points. In order to present a business plan to a group of investors, a business, uh, businesses most likely will use which uh, software? We are told in class that they'll probably use PowerPoint, right? So a business will probably use PowerPoint to present their business model. Two points. But there are other things that people are using now online, uh, let me like Canva and so on, and other applications which are just like PowerPoint, okay, maybe online. You can only have the Google uh, slides now, which people can now use to present their work online. So take note, answers like this will not be rejected. But most likely here, yeah, they talk about most likely, so we are sure PowerPoint will be the most convenient. Before the coming of microchips, what did computers use at the time? So before the coming of these microchips, know about vacuum tubes, right? Computers were using first generation vacuum tubes, then uh, the transistors, the second generations, integrated circuits, third generation, and so on. So before the coming of the vacuum of the sort of microchips in the fourth generation, these are what the computer, uh, the generation of computers were using, or the computers were using. Vacuum tubes, transistors, and integrated circuits. I think any tool that you give here, they'll give you the two points. Question four, what is a machine code? Machine code or machine language is the way computers represent data typically in binary form. Machine code or machine language is the way computers represent data which is typically in binary form. That's machine code. Two points. Guys, make sure you take your time to prepare for the HND. If you are not well prepared for HND, you will be shocked. We can only have solutions for other papers. And we are pleading with you students, we know you have different papers, we know you have the papers on WhatsApp. There are links below this video for you to send us papers on WhatsApp. You can contact us and send us these papers, send them directly from your drive to our drive, and so on, so that we can create a database where we can be able to share all these papers with many of your brothers and sisters who are coming up and will need this. What about even your instructors? The most of the instructors will need these papers, but they have difficulties having access to them. If we can put all of them together, then we are very sure that in the next uh, one or two years, or even before you write your HND this year, you will have a lot of access to a lot of papers and maybe with many solutions too. Thank you as you are going to do it in advance. Question five, name the first computer and its use. The first computer was the analytical engine. And it was used to calculate or compute numerical values of trigonometric functions or formulae. So this was the first computer and this was its use. Uh, the computer one mark, they use one mark. Question six, so section B. What is the meaning of RW and R? You already saw this before, right? So RW means read, write. Why R means read? So some uh, devices where you can read and write, some devices that you can only read them. Mm? So RW is read, write, R means read, two points. Question seven, a program that can copy itself 
I, I said this earlier on. Copy itself is a keyword. And infect a computer without the permission knowledge of the owner is called, you already know the answer. What is it? A worm. A program that can copy itself or replicate itself and infect the computer without the knowledge of the owner. A worm. Know that a virus cannot replicate itself, right? Question 8. Give three differences between a hop and a switch. Be careful with this question. They said give three differences, but they have given four points. What does that tell you? Give four differences between a switch and a hop. So, the first one, hops can only broadcast. Switches can broadcast, multicast, and even unicast. Next, hops cannot read network addresses, but switches can read network addresses. Number three, hops operate at layer one of the OSI model. Where do switches operate? At layer 3 of the OSI model. 4. Hops are not intelligent. Switches are intelligent devices. You had all of these from your general computing, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You saw all of these things about hops and switches. Question 9 is a bit uh, tactical. List 5 characteristics of impact printers. First of all, what are impact printers? Impact printers are printers that create immediate contact between the ink ribbon and the paper. And these printers can be very noisy, yet very popular. Then impact printers uh, have mechanical components that allow printing. Examples of uh, these printers include the daisy wheel printers, line printers, and dot matrix printers. Okay? Now, non-impact printers create pictures, characters, and figures without any interrupted contact between the printing device and the paper. Examples of these are laser printers, inkjet printers, and thermal printers. So, examples of non-impact printers. Okay? So, let's give the five characteristics of impact printers. So, they do not support transparencies. That's the first one. Second one, they are usually used for bulk printing. Thirdly, they can print through any uh, many layers of printers. Number four, they are very noisy. They are also very slow because they are mechanical in nature. <coughs> they are measured in characters per second, CPS. So the characteristics of impact printers, they do not support transparencies. They are usually used for bulk printing, can print through many layers of uh, printers, very noisy, are slow because they are mechanical in nature, they are measured in character per second, CPS. Question number 10. List any three pointing devices of the computer. Any three pointing devices of the computer. So examples of pointing devices include you have mouse, trackball, joystick, and light pen. So this is a mouse, a pointing device. Okay. Then we have the trackball. You can see it has a ball there, right? Trackball. We have the joystick. You know that just like um, the gear of a car, joystick, and the light pen. This is a light pen here. Okay. So all these are pointing devices. Any three of the mouse, light pen, trackball, and joystick. Question 11. List four differences between hardware and software. Hardware and software. Hardware is the tangible, while software is not tangible. Hardware is tangible, software is not tangible. Hardware is connected or slotted to the computer, while software are programs installed on the computer. So hardware is slotted or connected to the computer, while software is installed on the computer. 
Hardware wears out with time, slowly, while software does not. So hardware wears out with time, while software does not wear out. It can only be outdated. Hardware operates only machine language, while software takes input in human language. Hardware operates only machine language, while software takes input in human language. So you have four points here. Okay, if you are not subscribed, guys, make sure you click on the notifications uh, on the subscription button and the notifications. If you want to really promote or you enjoy what we are doing, please give us a thumbs up that's a like, put your comments, and share this video. We are equally calling for papers a call for papers. Please, we know you have papers and we need those papers so that we can produce more corrections for you. We can uh, upload them to the database and share with other friends of yours. Thank you because you know we are going to do that. If you want to send the paper, please click on any of the links below and or leave your comment on how you can send the paper and we will direct you. We need papers as soon as possible. No paper is trash. Paper in any field, not just for computer, in all the different fields. So now we are moving to section C, which carries half of the max. And you will see that you have taken just 30 minutes to answer sections A and B. But according to our proposal earlier on, we knew you were going to take about 15 minutes. We are taking just 30 minutes to answer sections A and B. Now let's use about 30 minutes or maybe 40 to answer section C. Now section C, the first question. Question one, 15 marks. What's the difference between the following? A. Microprocessor and supercomputer. B. RAM and ROM. C. Laptop and desktop. My dear students, my dear candidates, my dear friends. This question one is 15 marks. There is no need for you to have 14 on 15. Make sure you have all the marks. Let's write. So first of all, the differences between microcomputer and supercomputer. So microcomputers support only multitasking. You can open many applications on the computer at once. But supercomputers support multitasking and multi-users. That means many users can be multitasking even at the same time. Multi-users and multitasking. Number two difference. Microcomputers have no support for multiple CPUs, so they cannot use more than one CPU. But supercomputers work with multiple CPU. Third difference. Microcomputers are, have no ab ability for vector processing, while supercomputers carry out vector processing. Fourth difference. Microcomputers are slower and smaller in size. Supercomputers are very large and very fast. Fifth, microcomputers mostly use Windows operating systems. Supercomputers mostly use Linux operating systems. Set, uh, sit exam, uh, difference, microcomputers are less expensive Supercomputers are very expensive. Uh, section C, equation 1, sub 2. Differences between RAM and ROM. Differences between RAM and ROM. RAM is volatile memory. ROM is non-volatile memory. Number 2. There are two types of RAM. But there are four types of ROM. Okay? You have seen all of these examples for the different types of RAM and different types of ROM. Okay? Third one RAM holds data during processing. ROM holds permanent information like the BIOS. Okay? <coughs> when we say RAM is uh, volatile, it means that once the computer is switched off, and you put it back on, any information that was in the RAM will no more be there, unlike the ROM, which will still be there. Four. 
RAM loses all the data when the power is switched off. ROM retains its data when the power is off. 5. RAM has a higher memory So the differences between laptop and desktop. So the first, laptops are very portable, while desktops are less portable. Secondly, for laptops, the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse are embedded. But for desktops, they have separate mouse, keyboard, and monitor. For laptops, they are mostly connected to the internet via Wi-Fi, while desktops are mostly connected to the internet via Ethernet cables or Ethernet. Laptops are more expensive, while desktops are less expensive. For laptops, the components cannot be easily replaced since they are embedded. But for desktop, the components can be easily replaced since they are separate. Uh, the seats, uh, laptops are more reliable since they can be used for some time without electricity. While desktops cannot be used without electricity and so are not as reliable as laptops. So this is the question one for section three, um, a sub three. Now let's move to question two. Please make sure that if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, click on the subscription button so that you will be able to have access to our other videos, which can be viewed only by those who are subscribed. Note that subscription is free and you don't have to pay for anything as we are saying it is free because free does not mean you will come and give a token. It is completely free. So please subscribe if you want to have access to more of this information. Don't forget to share this video on other WhatsApp groups, on all the WhatsApp groups in which you are on Facebook groups where you have students offering going in for HND so that they can help us, can facilitate our work of helping revision for HND 2024. God bless you as you share. We are equally calling for papers. If you have passed HND papers, please, we will be happy if you can share those papers with us so that we can equally look at corrections. We can equally share with other students so that we prepare for this exam, which is not actually a competitive exam, and make it in grand style. God bless you as you send the papers. Question two, write short notes on the following. Microsoft Office programs, history of computers, and computer software. Let's take the first one. So Microsoft Office applications. So Microsoft Office Suites is a package from a Microsoft uh, Corporations that contains most of the applications for secretarial work. The package has many programs which can be installed together or as separate programs. Some of the programs in Microsoft Office Suites include we have Microsoft Word used for text processing, Microsoft Excel used for calculations, tabulations, and data analysis, Microsoft Access used for as database management system, Microsoft Publisher used for desktop publishing, Microsoft PowerPoint used for presentations. And there are more. You can have now the, for the new applications of Microsoft uh, Forms, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Whiteboard, OneNote, uh, OneDrive, Designer, and so on. So there are many other ones coming. And I'm sure Microsoft is going to bring in more. So all of these five points. <coughs> Sub two.
Write short notes on the brief history of computers. So today computers are very fast, sophisticated and quite powerful, but was not so in earlier stages. Before its invention, many other devices were used for calculation. The earliest were mechanical, such as the abacus years ago in Asia. Then the Nepias bones for multiplication in 1614. The automated Pascaline by Blaise Pascal in 1642 to add or subtract. The Leibniz calculator in 1694 to add and subtract and multiply or divide. Then came the Jacquard loom in 1801 that used punch cards, followed by the difference engine in 1822 and the analytical engine in 1835 by Charles Babbage, who became known as the father of computers. Hanary's tabulator then came in basis on the use of punch cards to enter data and later uh, this guy, Hellorys, later founded IBM in 1896. These computers are equally divided or classified according to the following five generations. We have the first generation from 1940s to 1950s that used uh, vacuum tubes for the evolving hardware and the main characteristic was that it was difficult to program and was voluminous. The second generation from 1950s, 1960s was transistor based and produced a lot of uh, much less heat compared to the previous one and was less expensive compared to the previous as characteristic. The third generation from 1960s, 1970s used integrated circuits and the main characteristic was the, uh, out, the outcoming of the uh, graphical user interface which was now developed in the fourth generation from the 1970s to present which use microprocessors as uh, evolving hardware. We are currently in the fifth generation for the present and the future, which uses artificial intelligence. The main characteristic of artificial intelligence is the mimicking of human behavior or communicating with humans. Okay? So you can summarize this thing as much as you can, because it says short notes. I'm just giving a summary here. You can give a summary in points form, okay? Like for each of the inventions, give it as a point, 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 if we come down to these uh, generations of computers. Now, uh, sub uh, three for question two. Computer software. Computer software refers to the various programs installed in the computer which help to configure and maintain the computer system and also help users accomplish the different tasks in the computer. Computer software is divided into three categories, that is application software, system software, and firmware. Application software refers to the software that helps users to accomplish specific tasks Examples of application software include Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Mavis Beacon, Image Viewer, PDF Reader, and so on. System software, on the other hand, helps to configure, optimize, and maintain the computer system. Examples include operating systems like Windows 10, language translators, uh, uh, translators but this is not an operating system, utility software, and device drivers. These are system softwares. Ubuntu operating system and all of that, Linux. Now, firmware. These are the software burned on a hardware for specific purposes, e.g. the BIOS. Firmware is specific software burned on the hardware for specific purposes, e.g. the BIOS. Now, let's look at question three, which is the last question for this 2023. Now, question three reads, the information below shows maths in accounting, data processing, and financial maths acquired by students in their continuous assessment. The subjects were weighted as follows, accounting coefficient 2, data processing coefficient 3, financial math coefficient 1. Now, these are the maths of the students on 20. So we have names and subjects for accounts, data processing, and financial math. And the students are Mansfield, Jefferson, Robin, Bradley, and Bellevue. These are their marks. Now, what is the task? We are required to prepare a master sheet 
a master sheet for the above information in any spreadsheet of our choice. B. Use the formula or function to calculate the average for all the students. C. Compute the function to calculate the position for all the students. And D. Compute the function to give the remarks for each student. For a, and they've given us a hint here. From 12 and above, the remark is excellent. From 10 to 11.99, the remark should be passed. And for less than 10, should be receipt. So this is going to be done in Excel, as you already know. This is the simplest application you can use. The simplest, let me read the question again. The information below shows the marks in accounting, data processing, and financial maths acquired by students in their continuous assessment. The subjects were weighted as follows. Accounting coefficient 2, data processing coefficient 3, financial math coefficient 1. And these are the marks of these five students on 20. You are required to A. Prepare a master sheet. Master sheet is the sheet that they use in preparing report cards, okay? The general marks for all the students and all of that, their averages, ranks. Prepare a master sheet using any spreadsheet of your choice, five marks. Use a formula or function to calculate the average for all the students, five marks. Compute the function to calculate the position for all the students, five marks. And compute the function to give the remarks. Any mark more than 12 or more, excellent. 10 to 11.99, passed. Less than 10, receipt. So let's see how we are going to do this. Please, if you are watching this video, it's because some people have taken out effort and put in a lot to prepare this material for you. The only thing you can do in return is to subscribe to this channel. Click on the notifications bell, as you can see, before you leave. Please don't leave without subscribing. It will be very bad. Equally, please make sure you share this video in your class. You might have watched this video, they might not have seen it. Please share it with your class, uh, classmates. Share the other WhatsApp groups where you have HND students so that we can actually accomplish our task of helping students prepare them for exams and showing them how to revise. We have equally for many other years, which we are uploading continuously every week, and for many other subjects. Please subscribe so that you can be able to watch them. Some of the videos you will not be able to watch them if you are not subscribed, because only those who are subscribed can watch. Subscription is not even paid, it's free. If you need a copy of this paper, please contact us in the link on WhatsApp below to get a copy of this paper in PDF. Something will go for something when you contact us for that. We are equally pleading via papers sent to us using any of the links below to help to prepare this material. Let's tackle this question. So this is a summary of what they want us to do. So now this is my spreadsheet. I want to create a master sheet. These are the marks. I've not yet changed anything. Here I can set accounting coefficient 2, data processing coefficient 3, financial math coefficient 1. Now, how do I get the averages? Note that I will not just say that they have the, the sum of all of these divided by 3, because they have coefficients. You have to first multiply each of them by the coefficients, have the total divided divide by the sum of coefficients. So let's see how we are going to do this. So here, the average of each student will be given by, there are many ways to do this. I'm taking one of the ways to make it very short. I'll first of all get the total mark. For the total mark for each student, is going to be, for example, Manfield. We have 13 times 2, because equation 2, right, for accounting. Plus, his mark in data processing is 9, but the weight of that subject is equation 3. So we have plus 9 times 3. For financial math, it's just equation 1. So 4 times 1, we'll just say plus 4. So, but these uh, things are in cells here, in Excel sheets. I have to enter the formula for man field here in E3. So what formula am I going to enter? I'll start by saying that it's equal to, you know the average, you just start by saying equal to, equal to, I have to first of all, I have to do some board math here. First of all, get the sum, if I divide by 6. Why am I dividing by 6? Because the equation, the sum of equations here is 6. 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 6. So I'll say 13 times 2, because the equation is 2, plus 9 times 3, plus 4 times 1, or just say plus 4. Mm? But these values are in cells. So it's going to give me, instead of saying that 13 times 2, I'll say B3, this is B3, B3 times 2, plus C3 times 3, plus D3 times 1, or just say plus D3 because times 1 will not change it, okay? When you do that, when you do that, you are going to have the total mark, you now divide by 6, so your formula should be entered like this. From this equal to the place where we have six so you enter this in e3 then you hold down the formula and you drag for all the other students to have their uh, averages 
Another thing is, first of all, I want to get the total. First of all, I have a column, maybe a column for total first. And then from there, the person can now get the average. Okay? So you can do it that way also. Now, this is for B, this is 5 max. Eh? <laughs> now, C, the position for the students. How do we get their positions? So for the positions, we are going to use a rank function. But for the modern, for the updated Excel function, you don't just write rank, you write rank.average.avg. And for this rank.avg, I want to start with man's field in this position here where you have F3. I want to enter the formula in F3. I'll say it's equal to rank.avg. I open my brackets. The cell here is E3. What do I want to rank? I want to rank for the range. These are the range. I want to rank with the average. The average in the range from E3 to E7. E3 to E7. So I'll take the range from E3 to E7. But can see I have to lock the formula. Because if I drag the formula down from E3 to E7, it will continue with E8, E9, E10 for each of them. So I lock the formula. So when I'm dragging down, this lock does not change. So I'll say dollar $E, dollar $3, that's for the first position here, to dollar $E, dollar $7. That's the last call of the students, right? This dollar sign is used to do what? To lock. So dollar $E, dollar $3, 2, 2 is two dots or colon. So dollar $E, dollar $7. So I've locked it, but I will not lock E3 because I lock E3 will not change. I'm locking only this range. Okay. So if you get this uh, rank dot average, you have to give the cell value without locking it. And they give the range, you lock the range, and then you put zero. This zero here now is to show that you are doing it in ascending order. Okay. So here now I'm going to enter this formula where in F3. Then we drag it down. You will see a small square here, hold it and drag it down. The last part now is to give the remarks. For the remarks, we are going to give our remarks here in this particular example in G3. So for the remarks, we are going to use the if function. If your average is this, excellent or what, or pass or receipt. So for the remarks, we are going to use the ifs. Because there are many conditions, we will just use the if function, but there are many conditions. I'm going to use ifs, I-F-S, because there are many of them. So I'll say if, I want to start with E3, where we have the average. If E3 is greater than or equal to 12, as they have said in the equation, you should say excellent. You write type exactly as this like this. E3 greater than or equal to 12, comma, a speech mark open, excellent speech mark close, comma. Now, if it is not uh, if it's not greater than or equal to 12, the next number should be greater than or equal to 10. Because you say from 10 to 11.99, because it's going to check the first condition. If it fails, it checks the second one. So if E3 is greater than or equal to 10, then it's going to end at uh, 11.999, right? You should put passed. Otherwise, if E3 is less than 10, less than 10, below 10, you should say receipt. So this is the formula. I'm going to put the formula in G3, and then we drag down the formula. When you do all of this, this is the result you have on the next page. Let's move to the next page. See the result you have. So this is going to be the result of what you will have when you do this thing as we are supposed to do it this way so you can watch this video again and again we have answered the paper of two hours in 52 minutes please make sure you take your time now you subscribe to this channel so that uh, we upload more videos for you and you send your papers if you need the pdf of this paper text us or contact us on whatsapp below make sure you like subscribe share and leave your comments thank you so much and don't forget that we are doing this because you are out there. If you are not there, we will not be able to do this. We are doing this for you. Yeah. Wish you the best. And the next video is upcoming. If you have subscribed and click on notifications, you will be notified immediately we upload it. Thank you and 